Okay. So welcome back to the um, second lecture hour to BC 308 Revelation. Daniel, we are just doing an introduction to the book of Daniel. Um, just a little bit more that we need to cover as a way of introduction. Let me share the PDF. Okay. All right. So we were just we were talking about the theology that we see or we find in the book of Daniel. And uh, we just uh, we mentioned about how uh, the da book of Daniel brings out the fact that Jehovah, Jehovah God is the most high God. He is sovereign over the rulers of the earth. That comes out very clearly uh, in the book of Daniel. We also mentioned other things uh, that we find in the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel revealing to us the ancient of days, uh, the title Son of Man coming out, the Messiah pointing specific to the Messiah and the Messiah being cut off or Messiah being dying uh, is pointed out there in the book of Daniel. And then we also mentioned about angels and angelic encounters that the book of Daniel brings out very clearly for us that there is the spiritual realm and there are angels at work in the spiritual realm. And of course, uh, this is in Daniel chapter 10. And also, along with that, we get a little insight into the fact that there, there are evil angelic beings. Because Daniel chapter 10 is one of those chapters in the Bible that speak about the conflict between good angels and bad angels, or angels that are opposed to God. And so that also comes out in the book of Daniel. All right, so that's uh, uh, most of the introduction. Now, very uh, quickly, from a historical per perspective, and we will refer to some of this, uh, uh, some of these things as we go along in the book of Daniel. But it's good to know uh, the history, because we said, uh, as we said uh, earlier, there is a lot of prophecy that is fulfilled in history that we find uh, that Daniel spoke about. So it's good to know. So it's good to know these things. So historically, there was the uh, Assyrian Empire or uh, uh, the Assyrian Kingdom, if you wanted, if we could call it that. Uh, between 8, 884 to 612 BC for about a period of 200 years. Then we pick up in the Babylonian Empire, which Daniel uh, was there. Then comes the Mede, Medo Persian. So usually they club, it's clubbed together, Mede, the Medes and the Persians, because the Medes were in power for a very short time and then the Persians took over. So this is usually referred to as the Medo-Persian Empire. Then come the Grecian Empire or the Greeks. And um, uh, part of that is uh, the, uh, the, the most famous leader of the Greek uh, Empire or the Macedonian Empire is Alexander the Great. And he, you know, in his conquests, uh, he came all the way to uh, the north, northwest, northwestern side of India. So uh, uh, Alexander the Great, and we, we will find him also referenced in prophecy here in Daniel's prophecy. And then the fact that he 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 had a very short life. He was he died early, and his kingdom, the Greek Empire, was then divided into four pieces or four sections. Subsequently came the Roman Empire, uh, which uh, continued for a long time, almost a 
thousand year period uh, the Roman Empire until about 1453 right so just just a little background because we will see some of these things coming out in the book of Daniel um, from a way of timeline you know and this is just information it's not something you need to memorize or know but just generally okay around uh, 727 722 BC the Assyrians came in and conquered the northern kingdom and later on they conquered Judah uh, after that came Nebuchadnezzar who came in and he conquered Judah and so you read about so the, the prophets Isaiah Jeremiah were, were warning the people about some of these things then comes uh, we read about Cyrus the Persian who overthrew the Babylonians and he issued the decree to go and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. You read about that in Ezra. Uh, Zerubbabel rebuilds the temple. Nehemiah rebuilds the wall. Then comes 333 BC, Alexander the Great. Uh, and after him, after the Greek Empire, there is the Seleucid Empire that comes in and there is uh, I mean, there, there are a lot of leaders there, a lot of kings there, but one of the most uh, notorious or well-known, I mean, not for good reasons, but one of the most uh, notorious uh, kings uh, as part of the Seleucid Empire is Antiochus Epiphanes. We will mention this later when we come to chapter 11, because Daniel speaks of these leaders. Right. So we will uh, just to give you a background, and, and you know, these names you will hear again when we come to. Um, chapter 11 and he comes and he does certain things which Daniel spoke of and uh, so on. Uh, yeah so from a historical perspective just to keep this information in mind we will uh, you know as we read through Daniel we will be mentioning some of these things and then you know, this just gives you a background that yeah okay these are historical events and we are seeing them being foretold in Daniel's prophecies, okay? And we will mention these things again as we get in, all right? So um, that kind of gives us a, a little background to the book of Daniel. Uh, any questions? All right? So what I want to do is, um, you know, I'm going to very quickly mention in passing uh, a little bit about the historical site, which is about Daniel and some of the events which we are all very familiar with. So we're not going to be focusing on that. Uh, so I'll just mention it for the sake of uh, completion, but we will pick up directly from chapter two, the prophecies. Okay. So from a historical side, uh, you know, the life of Daniel and his friends uh, stands out in, in the book of Daniel. And we know the stories. Chapter one, we know the stand they take uh, to, uh, to uh, especially from, a, um, from following the Jewish diet. You know, that, okay, these are things you eat. These are things you don't eat. And so they stood by that and God honored them. And, uh, you know, they did very well in, 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 the, in the learning, uh, the education that they were put through. You know, chapter one, so we're all familiar with it. Chapter two, we see how, uh, you know, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and Daniel and, and his friends, they pray together and God gives them uh, the understanding uh, the, the a revelation of the dream and the understanding of the dream. Um, chapter three, we see, uh, I'm just reviewing the historical part of it so that you know we won't be touching on it again, but these are stories we are familiar with. Um, chapter three, we see how they're all forced to worship the golden image, but uh, they don't bow their knee to the golden image. They refuse to do it. And uh, they are thrown into the fiery furnace but they say, you know, hey, if God's going to deliver us, he will deliver us. If he doesn't, it doesn't matter. We are not going to bow our knee. Um, that's their dedication, which, which really speaks to us, really stands strong 
that we shouldn't bow our knee to anything. And so here they are, uh, they refuse to bow, but God amazingly delivers them. And Nebuchadnezzar acknowledges uh, there's, you know, there's no God like the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, very interesting, this is just a passing comment that um, the names of these Hebrew boys, these four Hebrew boys were given Babylonian names, uh, which uh, were actually names that in some way dedicated them to the Babylonian gods. Um, so, you know, and obviously this is done because they, are, they were now trying to be assimilated into the uh, Babylonian system. And so they were given these names uh, and so on. But anyway, so chapter three, we see that powerful testimony of these young men. Uh, and then uh, chapter four is Nebuchadnezzar's, uh, you know, uh, experience of how he loses his mind and then he regains his mind and he recognizes that, they, that you know, ultimately God is in charge. Um, chapter six is Daniel's stand of his devotion to God. That even when he's, you know, he, he, he goes and prays. Even when there's a decree uh, by Darius that you shouldn't pray uh, to anyone else. Daniel prays. He's thrown in the den of lions and God delivers him. And uh, again, that becomes a powerful testimony to the Most High God, Jehovah God. Right. So these are stories that we are all familiar with uh, in the book of Daniel. So I'm not... Are going to focus on these uh, these stories, these actual historical events, which are a powerful testimony to God and a testimony to the lives of these Jewish people, young men who stood up for the name of the Lord. Okay, so that's all we're going to do as far as uh, you know, looking at his history and the lives of these people. What we're going to do now is start looking at the prophetic text, right? The first prophetic text in the book of Daniel starts off in chapter two itself. So again, we know the little background of the story. Nebuchadnezzar wakes up one morning, the Babylonian king, and he says, hey, I had a dream, but I don't remember the dream, um, but I want all of you who are in my court uh, so he calls all his wise men and he says, look, I want you to tell me what my dream was and I want you to tell me the meaning of the dream. And of course, they try to negotiate. They say, King, you know, if you tell us the dream, at least we can tell you the meaning. But, uh, you know, for us to go and tell you what your dream was, that's not possible. It's, we can't do it. Uh, of course, he gets angry and he says, you know, I'm giving you only so much time. Uh, if you don't do it, all of you are going to be dead. And that's when Daniel comes and he tells the king's uh, officer, say, I will come back with what the king wants. Just give me time. So that night he goes and he prays with his friends. They pray and that God reveals the dream and the meaning to Daniel. Right. So Daniel goes back to Nebuchadnezzar and he tells him the dream. And he tells him the meaning. Okay, so let's. So we're going to pick up with that dream itself, because that's prophetic text, All right? So let's go to Daniel chapter two. We're going to read verses twenty-eight to forty-nine. I want us to read that entire section of scripture. Um, we'll just read uh, maybe three verses each, and then we're going to look into what is the meaning. Okay. But Daniel chapter 2, verses 28 to 49. Can somebody read that for us, please? Uh, I mean, we'll read three verses each. Daniel 2, 28. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. They shown King Nebuch Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah, what will happen in days to come? 
Your dream and the visions and pass through your mind as you lay on your bed are this. As you were laying there, O king, your mind turned to things to come, and the revealer of mysteries showed you that is going to happen. Okay, somebody from verse 13 onwards. Okay. We we'll take turns to read, all right? So, somebody, Neelam, Aaron, Kanan, just go ahead, yeah, verse 30. Yeah, but as for me, this secret has not been revealed to me because I have more wisdom than anyone living. But for our sake, who makes known the interpretation to the king, and that you may know the thoughts of your heart. You, O king, were watching and behold a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and it from was wisdome. This image, images, has was a head was of. fine gold, it chest and arms of silver, it a will and things of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. 34. As you watch, a rock was cut from the mountain, but combination of iron and Clay. Sorry. Clay. As you watch, a rock was cut from a mountain, but not by human hands. It struck the feet of iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver, and gold. Then the wind blew them away without the trace, like chaff on a tracing floor. But the rock that locked the statue down be became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. Okay. Well, Thomas, Aaron, Dave, go ahead. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And whosoever the children of men dwell, the, the beasts of the field and the flaws of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over all them all. Thou art that head of gold. Mm. After you, after you, there will be another empire, not as great as yours. Of and after that, that, that a third, an empire of bronze, which will rule the whole earth. And then there will be a fourth, a fourth empire as strong as iron, which uh, shatters and breaks everything. And just as iron shatters everything, it will shatter. And crush all the early empire. You also saw that the feet and the doors uh, were partly clay and partly iron. Uh, this means that it will be divided empire. It will have something of the strength of iron because there was iron mixed with the clay. Hmm. Verse 42. And as the tri and as the toe of the feet were partially of iron and partially of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. So you saw iron mixed with the ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of man, but will not adhere to the one another, just as iron does not mix with the clay.
and in the days of this kings of god of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people it shall break the pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever in so much as you saw that the same the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it broke it pieces the iron the bronze the clay the silver and the gold the great god has made known to the king what will come to pass after this the dream is certain and it is in interpretation is sure okay verse 46 Then oh, somebody could just read, yeah, 46 to 49. Somebody could read it. Yeah, go ahead. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face, prostrate before Daniel, and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of go gods, the Lord of kings, and the revealer of secrets. Since... you could reveal this secret then the king promoted daniel and gave him many great gifts and he made him ruler over the whole province of babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of babylon also daniel petitioned the king and he said shadrach meshach and abednego over the affairs of the province of babylon but daniel sat in the gate of the king okay yeah. thank you thank you everyone all right so this dream really forms the outline of a lot of uh, other visions and dreams that are the visions we're going to see or prophecies we're going to see in the book of daniel right so it's like this is an outline and then when we get into chapter 5 and chapter 7 uh, these things are then uh, uh, the details of these things are given to us okay so so daniel gets the secret the dream what nebuchadnezzar had right now what i want to just point out is god gave the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was not, you know, a man of God. He was not a prophet of God. He was not uh, any great sp spiritual person in the sense of, you know, a, a worshiper of the living God. But he was the king. He was the ruler. Uh, he was not a believer in, in the living God, but. still god gave to give him this dream so you know god speaks and he can also speak to the unsaved or to the un, to the to someone who doesn't know him personally right and we see that many times uh, even in the case of potiphar in the time of joseph he didn't believe in yahweh god but god gave him a dream about what was going to come happen So that's what we see God do here again. He's giving Nebuchadnezzar, a Babylonian king, a dream, and the dream is, he sees an image, and this image has different, uh, different parts of the image, are made of different metals. So he sees the head part, that's of gold. So I'm just, I'm just kind of summarizing what we read here in verse thirty-two. head is of gold then the chest and the arms of silver then he has the belly and the thighs of bronze then he has legs of iron and then the feet is a mixture of iron and clay All right so that's what he saw in the dream and now daniel has the interpretation of it and like we said in the very beginning in many of the passages the prophetic text in the book of daniel 
uh, the interpretation is already there. And as we go through the book of Daniel, we will, you know, it adds to this, adds to what we read in chapter two. So what we read in chapter two will become clearer. But for now, let us try to understand what this means, right? So one more part of what the king saw was, he saw this image. So he saw this big image, like a standing man, gold, silver, uh, bronze, iron and feet of iron and clay saw this and then he saw verse 34 a huge rock a huge stone which was not made with human hands like you know it wasn't like cut out of a mountain with human hands no but this huge thing came and struck this image and crushed everything and this rock or this stone Verse 35, it became a big mountain and filled the whole earth. So that was a dream uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw. Okay, so now what does this mean? What's the interpretation? So the interpretation and the meaning is given to us right here. So let's, you know, and that starts off from verse 38 so in summary what is god speaking about he's talking about kingdoms and he's revealing the sequence of kingdoms that are going to come so verse 38 daniel says King Nebuchadnezzar, you are that head of gold. That means that head, the head part of gold represents you, the Babylonian king. Verse 39. But after you, there's going to be another kingdom. That's the um, chest and arms of silver. And then he says, after you, there'll be a third kingdom. That's verse 39. Another kingdom, which is the bronze uh, the belly and the thighs. And then there's going to be a fourth kingdom, verse 40. And it's of iron. And it's going to be very strong. It's going to crush all the previous kingdoms, meaning it's going to be a very, very strong kingdom. Verse 41. And then later on, he says, but this kingdom is going to be divided. The feet and the toes. And it's going to become a mixture of iron and clay. So it's almost like this kingdom, iron, that kingdom is going to be fragmented. It's going to be divided so many parts. And it's going to become a mixture of iron and clay. There's going to be, it's going to be partly strong, partly weak. And, but it won't mix together. It won't be held together because just like iron and clay don't mix, uh, this kingdom is going to be very loosely held. It's not going, going to be uh, very strong, but it's going to have something of the iron kingdom. I mean, the Roman not, I mean, I shouldn't say the Roman now, you'll say it later, <laughs> but it's going to have something of the iron in it, right? In this very loosely held kingdom, it's going to have something of the iron in it. And verse 44 And in the days of these kings, so that means there are going to be many leaders, many kings, when in this fifth era. So that means the fourth was the feet of iron. Then comes a fifth. But this fifth is a very loosely held uh, kind of kingdom distribution. It's not going to be held together. It's a mix of iron and clay. That means it comes out of that iron kingdom, but it's 
fragmented, it's loosely held, it has some part of the Iron Kingdom. It has many, many kings, verse 44. So this fifth kingdom really is a conglomeration, it's a loosely held you know, unity of some many kings. So when you see this fifth kingdom, in the days of these kings, verse 44, what will happen? The God of heaven will set up his kingdom. So he says this rock that came and struck and crushed everything else, it actually represents the kingdom of God. God's own kingdom. And that kingdom will be established on the earth. It will destroy all the previous kingdom, meaning it will supersede, surpass, overpower. It will basically annihilate, meaning take out of memory all of this. And the kingdom of God will be established. And God himself will set up his kingdom on the earth. Okay. So, what can we take away from here? This dream about the image and the rock and all of that is starting with Nebuchadnezzar. Very clear. He already said, you are the head of gold. And he then talks about a sequence of kingdoms, starting with Nebuchadnezzar, and then four others, or three others, uh, three others. And then the fifth one is a loosely held collection of small kingdoms with many kings. Right. So he's talking about a series of empires or kingdoms. And then he talks about a fifth set of kings in whose time God will set up his kingdom. So very interesting, like we said in the introduction, he is going from the time of Nebuchadnezzar all the way to the time of the kingdom of God being set up on the earth. So he's just giving a sequence. Now, he is not mentioning the names of these kingdoms. He doesn't mention here. But when we go into subsequent chapters, he starts telling us, this is who those kingdoms are. Which, what will be the next kingdom? The second. What will be the third? What will be the fourth? He tells us. And what's going to happen? Okay, but keep in mind that chapter two is like a, a, a outline that is further developed and expanded as we move through uh, the book of Daniel. The other thing I want to highlight here is um, the imagery that's used. That means parts of the human body are being used to represent kingdoms, the head, the, 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 the chest and arms, the belly and thighs, the feet and uh, the toe, the feet and the toes. They, each of these parts are actually representing kingdoms, empires, if you want to, you know, whatever you want to use. So that's something to keep in mind that sometimes God can use those kinds of images, but here the uh, meaning is assigned, meaning he's interpreting it for us. He's saying, okay, this is what, you know, all of this represents. It represents kingdoms. But one thing we, uh, we can also take as part of the imagery is the mountain. This is verse 35. The stone that struck the image became a great mountain. So, a mountain, the image of a mountain, represents a kingdom. It represents God's kingdom. So keep that in mind, because sometimes, even in dreams, 
or when God is speaking uh, prophetically and you see a mountain, I'm not saying all the time, but one of the meanings of a mountain is kingdom. It represents kingdoms or a kingdom. And in this case, the mountain is representing the kingdom of God. This is God's kingdom, which will over cover the whole earth. Okay. So I think I will, we will stop here for today. But this chapter two, the dream here, forms an outline that is developed further as we go through the book of Daniel. Right? Keep this in mind that the book of Daniel, chapter 2, begins with this, a dream that is actually giving a sequence of kingdoms that are to come. Starting with Nebuchadnezzar, he talks about totally five kingdoms. Nebuchadnezzar, another kingdom, a third kingdom of bronze, a fourth kingdom of iron, and then a fifth kingdom, which is a loosely held collection of many kings. And it is in the time of this, this loosely held, this fifth kingdom, that God is going to set up his kingdom. So that becomes a lot of interest to us. Hey, what is that loosely held collection? What would that mean? Or what could it mean for us? Because it is in the time of that collection of kings that God is going to set up his kingdom. We will come back to chapter 2 as we read other chapters because now we can in the other chapters will help us tell us what these kingdoms were. But what I want to close with is in the book of Daniel, this fifth kingdom, this mixture of iron and clay, the feet, which is a mixture of iron and clay, loosely held with kings, 10 kings, is not specified for us. So that is where there is a lot of uh, um, people try to say, what is that fifth kingdom? The clue that we have given to us in chapter 2 is this fifth kingdom is essentially part of the previous feet of iron. Because this fifth kingdom here, which is a mixture of iron and clay, has something of the iron in it. So we will recognize a little later on when we go, oh, the fifth kingdom. The, 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 the fourth kingdom, the preceding one, which is the feet of iron, we know what that is. And because we know what that is, I will mention it to you, you know, at the right time, I think, in the next class when we identify these kingdoms. Because we know what it is, we most likely can say what the fifth kingdom is, because it's a mixture of iron and clay. It's an intermingling of the original feet of iron with, it says here in verse 43, with other people. So it's a mixture. It's a mixing up of people who belonged to the fourth kingdom, the feet of iron, plus clay, mixture of all the other people. And among them were Ten kings, the toes, as we will see later on, they represent kings. So kingdoms and kings is what he's talking about. 
but he doesn't specify what that fifth kingdom is. So that is where we have to, you know, try and understand. But this fifth kingdom is of great interest to us because he said, during the times of these kings, God will come, set up his kingdom. So that's why what this fifth kingdom is, is something, you know, uh, those who study Bible prophecy are trying to understand, try to interpret, because then that gives us some clue of, you know, maybe we are pretty close or what is happening. Okay. Uh, we will pause here. I just want you to think about these things. When we continue next week, we'll pick it up, pick up in uh, chapter five. Uh, the, the next section we're going to look at is from chapter five, where uh, Belshazzar sees some handwriting on the wall and he calls Daniel to interpret it. Okay, so we will start with chapter five. But remember, all these things that we're going to read build up on chapter two. Okay, so is chapter two clear? Uh, so far, any questions, any doubts? It's okay so far, right? Uh, we will build up on this, you know, as we go into chapter five and very interesting, you know, keep chapter two in mind because when we get into chapter five, and then when we get into uh, chapter seven, he begins to specify the names of those kingdoms. And it's right there in the scripture text. So it's very interesting, actually, that he'll tell you, this is the kingdom, this is the kingdom, and then gets into more and more details, okay? So it, uh, it really becomes more and more interesting. We're going to pause here and uh, we will pray and then go for a break. And I will meet you shortly uh, after the break in our next class. Okay. Could somebody please pray and then we will dismiss. So we'll pray. Go ahead. God, thanking you for the class, Father God. Thanking you for the subject, Father God. There is a revelation, Father God, to your kingdom and the upcoming time, Father God. Thanking you, Father God, the everything, Father God. Help us to understand, Father God, the, the subject, Father God, the Daniel book and revelation book, Father God. Father God, give your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, that we can understand the nicely way, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you. Upcoming time, just submitting to you and Father God. Just take care of every side. Thank you, Father. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Um, take a quick break. I'll see you at 11 o'clock in the other class. God bless. See you soon.